Welcome to our workshop. Um, I think we have to wait for more people. But meanwhile, you can introduce yourself in our board. I will share a link. Oh, where do I go to the chat? I got the link in. Mm -hmm. you sent? I got the link in. Yep. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so we've actually got a lot of warm up stuff for you here. Um, there's the introduction section. And then once you've introduced yourself, then you get to take that avatar and you get to bring it down onto the world map and position yourself. And if you accomplish that because you're just like a mural pro and really, really efficient this early in the morning, yes. um, then we've also got some questions for you. Uh, we're curious, you know, what brought you here? Um, what is your familiarity or comfort or experience with role play in service design and with design games? Um, really looking forward to hearing your responses there. Uh, if you've played these games before, how you use it in service design. And if you have made a design game, uh, follow that little dotted line because we would love to connect with you and hear more about what game you've made. Quite a few challenging tasks this early in the morning. But <laughs> 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 it looks fun. <laughs> yes, definitely. Yeah, this is the pregame. Um, if you can't finish these tasks, then you don't get to participate in the rest of the game. So just chop, chop. <laughs> Uh, hi, can I ask a quick question? I'm not a Mac user, so control command, what's that equivalent to a Windows? Ah, um, control, I think command could be window. I'm not sure. Wait, I'll Google. <laughs> I would say it's function. Uh, function yeah. No, function would be alt. No, no, no that's at least in my, uh, win in my Windows keyboard, it would be function alt, alt. but I'm not sure. Let me try. Which one do you want to be? I can also type something. It's this one here. It's dying ghetto. Yeah, I know, but um, which um, which emoji do you want to be? <laughs> I uh, have a cat. I'm... A cat? Yes. I can get you a cat. <laughs> uh, I think Abby is on it. Diane, I'm going to send you some instructions also for future use if you ever are just like, I need to add an emoji. Oh, fantastic, thank you. You want to be a cat. We have a dog already. Yeah, don't get too close to the dog. <laughs> <laughs> Where did they find the emojis? I think you were talking about that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so um, I'm, I'm number, number second person here asking, is it on the left? So oh, yeah. Are you on a Mac or a PC? PC. A PC. Okay, then we can do a um, a Mac service. Where 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 do you at? Where are you at? Uh, what? You're a Fra Francisca or? Ah, oh, Tia, Tia Lemon. I haven't written something yet. I can. Okay. <clears throat> right away. Thank you. Anyone else? <laughs> Sorry, I keep, I don't know how to edit this. Um, ah, yeah, it's locked. I think all of them are locked, interestingly. Yeah, they're locked. Mm. Yeah, because I'm a visitor. Is that why? No, no. If you, if you go computer. one uh, line below, they're not locked. I don't know, it's just the one line somehow, I think. No, it's more than one. There is one. Yeah, all of them are locked. No, out. it's locked. Really? Ah, oh, not everything. Oh, okay. uh, you have not to... everything. Oh, Some parts are not locked. Yeah. Oh, yeah. wow, the map's upside down. <laughs> Somebody has advanced to the next stage. Nice. <laughs> Surprise, it is. <laughs> I am I'm Diane here. I, I also have the problem of finding where the emoji is. I need a cat. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody needs a cat. The trickiest question today. I can copy someone else's cat. Ah. 
Uh, uh, what kind of animal? animal? <laughs> Could I have a pig? Yeah. Is it possible to find a pig? There's the oh, cat. Sure. <laughs> Who's <laughs> asking for the pig? Me, Tia Lemon. Yeah, we can do that. We got you. Oh, so nice. <laughs> How did you get the colored ones? Because if I type in an animal, it's black and white. Um, you can go to, so like, if you go to the box, there's um, the color here. You can change the color background. Ah, okay. Oh, thank you for the pig. I'm so happy. <laughs> it's so cute. <laughs> it's really cute. Uh, can someone help me? My box is locked, unfortunately. So I'm Francisca. Oh, boy, that's fun. What is it? Excellent. Underneath a shark. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's open now, right? Yeah. Okay, for me, it says this object is locked, unfortunately. Some of them are just locked right now. Yeah, it's kind of like knocking on a door. If one of them's locked, that's our mistake. But there will be another one that's open. I feel like I just unlocked it. Tidy for Cisco is open. You can take that one, maybe. Um, oh, I'm sorry. Hi. <laughs> Diane, the yellow cat. Yeah. <laughs> I don't. I don't it's funny that we both like cats and we're both Diane's. Yeah, there are like two Dianes. Uh -huh. yeah. Hi, Diane from Sydney. I'm Diane from Taipei. Hi, how are you? Are there any more people coming though? Um, so everyone who's new, every, I, I guess everyone knows what to do now. You see my screen, you see, um, you can find your, uh, the link in the chat. That's the link to our mural board. And here you can introduce yourself. Here's the introduction, here's the, put your name card and someone is at the door. Right, someone let me already. And put yourself on the map where you're from, where you're sitting at right now. And there are some questions. Some questions down here that you can answer by putting your avatar, just copy and paste on um, if you um, have played the game before, like role-playing game, or if you have used role-playing game in service design and so on. I think um, we'll start soon. Or maybe it's too early. <laughs> I think we could wait until quarter past. Yeah, I have to find Europe. <laughs> right? <laughs> or is it? What do we do when it's not the center of everything? No, why is it the center of everything? I couldn't find my own place here. Mm -hmm. That's a strong question. We have, uh, we have 18 participants on Zoom, but only 14 people on the board. Is anyone having problems getting to the board? You can, you can talk to us. <clears throat> this is not a presentation, it's a workshop, so we, it's better to interact. And um, if you can't find Zoom, just uh, shout me to get you, um, no, Miro. We'll get yeah. you the link. Yeah. Hmm. The link is in the chat in case uh, you cannot find it. Is someone still searching for Europe? I think I found it. <laughs> oh, nice. Thank you. I'm so searching for Europe. For uh -huh. <laughs> we made it a bit tricky. <laughs> ah, that's good. That's good. I like everyone it. Everyone wakes up, you know. <laughs> I like it. So Europe, is it with a blue panda? Uh, it's, it's an otter, yes. Oh, yeah. a little otter. Yeah, I thought it was there. So nice. I would pick my avatar. So, 
So someone from, oh my God, where is this? Oh, okay, South America. <laughs> it's super late there, right? Yes, that's me and Josie. We are in South America. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, I'm also, I'm on vacation. I'm in Hawaii. <laughs> <laughs> For the first time, I place myself at the top of the map. Um, yeah, anyone is still not on the board because we will use the board during the session. So you should get oh, wow. the board by going to the, the chat um, in Zoom. And there's an, um, a link to Miro. Because I think we have 14, 13. Not even 14. Yeah, I think that's intense too. Arthur's universal corrective map of the world. Abby, where did you find this map? And Google. <laughs> <laughs> and you were reading the title and I thought I, we should have covered this. <laughs> I just wrote in map upside down. Someone moved me without my instant. <laughs> Where am I now? Ah, okay. Oh, that's... Yeah, I moved you. We were in Middle East for a long time. <laughs> So I would say for people who are in Mural, if you ever get lost, you can always click SA, the bottom circle, and you can follow, and then you can see what um, we see. Uh, you can also use on the right side, if you're looking at Co's screen, she's got the outline pulled out, and you can do that also if you just click that box with like, it looks like an agenda on it, like a, a box oh, outline. Yeah, fine. Mm -hmm. And so then that will pull out and you can sort of zoom to where we are in that moment during the game. Because it's a pretty big board. We're going to mm -hmm. be going to a bunch of different areas. Basically, who should we be following if we want to follow the board? SA. SA. Okay. I can also ask you to follow me and then everyone just follow yeah, 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 yeah. You're, You guys are busy. Sure. Um, mm -hmm. Introducing yourself. All right. We got, we got. Mm -hmm. We only have 18 participants. Yeah, do I pronounce your name like Taya or Thea? Uh, Thea. Taya, Taya, cool. Yeah. What is the name of the design game that you made? Whoa, uh, I used another, I, I found the design game, so I haven't done, done it myself. I found an interesting design game and I tried it out. Oh, cool. What's it called? Uh, it was really good. It was uh, when we were going to start up a project. Oh, we cool. used that game for um, gamification, that project start. Okay, what methods do we want to use? uh what um, goals do we have it was different kind it was like a diamond we were building that diamond with different methods di different goals different um what was it um Atlas. risk uh yeah. participants it was really a nice game uh-huh it's from it. um also out of alto university it, it's from university yes yeah, i think i don't know if it's from alto could be uh, yeah, can you post a link to the to where it is? Uh, yeah, I, I I didn't think I was going to talk about that today, so I haven't prepared. <laughs> I will see if I can find it. Uh, yeah. Thank you. Yeah, you have two hours. You can add it to the chat anytime. Good, good, <laughs> also, good. Anyone as well who wants to share um, their their project, their games, feel free to drop it in the chat or drop it in. Do we have a section for that actually? Can drop it in the section about have you done design games yeah exactly here yeah i found it directly just google it i will <laughs> post it in the chat nice. thank Bye. you so um do you think there would be any more people coming we are 18 at the moment mm. 
Yeah, we should probably get started. Yeah, otherwise um, we'll be too late. So um, while you are, while you guys are um, introducing yourself, we're gonna start our presentation. I can close this. Right, so um, welcome everyone. Um, my name is Ko and Molly. <laughs> Um, we're happy to see you here. Um, we did not expect, um, so that's just a small group, but this is really good because we, we can um, play more closely. And yeah, feel free to like turn on your microphone, interact with us. This is not a presentation, it's a workshop. So we like to interact with you. And yeah, we're introducing today um, our project Playbase. As part of um, our talk, we'll, our session is called Dungeons and Designers for um, Service Design Global Conference 20. Um, Playbase is our project that me and Molly, we, we've uh, developed for a year now. Um, what we're doing today, already we do the introduction, some icebreaker where you guys are in, uh, sitting at um, right now. And we're gonna do a little presentation to understand um, our theory, our background story behind the game. And then we're gonna play, which includes the world building. You get into characters and then we play two missions together today. So it's gonna be a little speed up now. Um, who are we? That is Molly and that is me. We are experienced designer at Dingback and the four angels um, with us, um, also experienced designer at Dingback. We are a um, digital agency based in Cologne. So Alessandra, Abby, Josie and Jessica are helping us today um, playing the game with you guys in the breakout session. All right. Right, so, so yeah. yeah, so because we work at this agency and, and we offer full service from pretty much everything from, from start to finish, we deliver products for clients and services. And because we're involved in so many of the stages, we noticed a few things in our work, uh, three problems that are holding us back from delivering something really great, both internally and externally. And so the problems are that there's a lack of knowledge, there's a lack of teamwork, and there's a lack of experimentation. Uh, so lack of knowledge. To work together effectively in design teams, we need to be on the same page. So we have to be communicating really well and sharing knowledge. But as you possibly experienced, um, how we process and how we share knowledge is really outdated. Uh, slides and reports, they don't really cut it all the time. And because it's not leveraging any of the science that we now have of how our brains work, uh, it's harder for us to make connections. So even if we're presented new knowledge, we might fall back on previous biases or ideas that we had when we were coming into the project. And there's a lack of teamwork. And this is always a challenge uh, because we all know it's not the team of champions that wins, it's the champion team. And this applies to both our internal projects, but definitely um, the external ones working with clients. And if teams do not share a vision, if there's poor communication, uh, or if there's a lack of empathy or respect, you know, it comes at a really high cost to budget and morale and definitely to the final outcome. And then last, there's a lack of experimentation where we're really rushed often. Um, and when we're rushed, we, we group think and we vote on the safe bets. Uh, we, we repeat what other people are doing and we're caught in this uh, loop of just ends, endless inside the box thinking because we don't budget in the safe space to play with new ideas, uh, to experiment a bit. And we know this is a problem and we know all these are problems. Uh, but the problems are also the opportunities. And so these, Ko, you're not sharing the slides anymore. I don't know, but I, I, I want to get this one out a moment. Um, so imagine a picture where it's three icons that we just presented. So there's the lack of knowledge, the lack of teamwork, the lack of experimentation. And the problems are also the opportunities, right? That's what we know as service designers. Problem spaces are opportunity areas. Um, so these three aspects are simple and key to building a strong foundation to generate the ideas to explore, to dig in, and to get great outcomes. 
グループが分かれてるわけじゃない。We get some German silenced. <laughs> some muted. Some, I hear some muffled German.、Um, okay, so yeah, later we always say, so we keep overlooking this need for a good foundation because, like I mentioned, increasing demands on speed,、uh, performance, so on and so forth. But when the shit hits the fan, when suddenly you're having problems,、uh, then you're in trouble. And you know, welcome to 2020, which is the era of shit hitting the fan.、Um, especially when you factor in systems design and complexity, today's wicked problems aren't going to be solved by, by quick thinking and improvised solutions.、Uh, so we need to think differently and more deliberately and bake exploration and playfulness into the beginning.、Um, teamwork, knowledge building, all of that into the foundation. Right, and that's why today we're introducing our solution, which is Playbase. Playbase would help you build a strong foundation with your team. So, if we're saying that we are leading innovation with our clients, with our team, our process might as well be innovative and inviting participants to look at the project from different angles.、Um, so, why can't we be more explorative in the way that we work? And Playbase is designed. Um, to help you look at, the, at things in a systematic way. So、um, it helps you to connect the aspects and work outside of silos in the way that normally we, we, we are not used to. It creates a space for participants to understand the context and learn to collaborate and enforce team building. And yeah, we give a scenario for experimentation. If this would help you, since you're all designers, I suppose,、um, you can think of it as a, a cross、um, breed between an ice breaking and Lego serious play, where you simulate something serious in the project into a playful setting. And、um, you have this safe space, a laid back moment that you have with your colleagues, but you get、um, a level of education the same way that you get this like, employee training session. Right.、Um, if you still don't get why,、um, why we're introducing this, we'll just go over really quickly what's going on. So, to get strong ideas, we need everyone on the same foundational understanding. But a quick Google shows you that even when this is like a future forecasting work workshop,、uh, this is what meetings are looking like right now. This is how we are sharing information, presentations, slides. It's very passive learning at best.、Um, People aren't really reading the reports, and often the main takeaways are being listed and then they're forgotten. We're losing our insights, and too often it's boring,、uh, which is a problem because the opposite of play isn't work, it's boredom. So, I'm just going to give you a quick anecdote and then we'll start getting into how to play. But, fun story scientific study actually is that、um, they did a study and two, they put two strangers together in a room. and Test to test again, this makes people's stress levels increase. So, you, you probably know this feeling your palms get sweaty, your heart rate increases, you're less creative, you're insecure.、Um, and this means you're less able to problem solve, which is you know, bad for our business. But the same doesn't happen with close friends. You put them in the room together and they're fine, they can problem solve. And studies show that the way to get from the stress reaction from strangers. Um, who can't problem solve so well together, they're insecure, to that of the close friends is simpler than we think. And it's just 15 minutes of collaborative gameplay. So we thought, let's bring this into our teamwork process.、Uh, because again and again, play is proven to be good for our brain power. It's, it's how we learn, how we explore, how we relax, it's how we connect.、Um, and studies show that play allows us to take a novelty and newness. And use it to adapt and become more flexible and have a good time in the process. And so, Proust believed there to be two options. You can either learn painfully,、uh, so maybe you learn relationship dy dynamics because you had a really hard breakup and then you gain emotional intelligence,、um, or maybe you learn painlessly,、uh, which would be you're learning because you have a bunch of books and you've got a really great mentor.、Um, but we believe there's a third option, which is learning playfully. And this is a shortcut that allows you to experience、uh, the pain of failure, but in a safe and simulated space. And so the knowledge clicks,、uh, but the consequences aren't sticking. So、um, now, if you're all、uh, designers, you may be familiar with this tool, which is、um, role playing. 
Um, just drop in the chat if you used a um, role-playing game in your design process before. So as a design method, this role-playing game should help you to create empathy through acting out. But how many of you actually integrate this role-playing game in the process? Because um, if you look into the room with your clients, with the managers, you know that um, the, the Mr. Manager would not like to act it out for sure, um, which is too bad because role playing as awkward as it is um, will help you and your participants get into the shoes of the person that you're playing. So like um, either it's your users or your stakeholders. Um, it's making your product better because you understand how people go through it, allowing you to run through the scenarios and explore um, the situation. Yeah, so what we did was we mapped out how to get the best benefits from both play um, and role play. And we found that to be role playing games like Dungeons and Dragons, uh, which is much more accessible than traditional role play because role play is very physical. Uh, people are put on the spot. There's a bit of like bodily uh, embarrassment that's possibly going to happen. Um, but tabletop role playing games, it's just spoken. You just say, I stand up and I go across the room. And so what we're doing is we're taking the storytelling part and we're putting structure in to make role play more approachable, less awkward, and a bit more constructive with mechanics and rules, uh, with everything being there for a reason. And the reason is to help participants to understand the research that you're presenting to them. And that's the foundation of Playbase. Um, it's a collaborative game for exploring research by reformulating your research outcome into game elements and you play out the possible scenarios together. It is designed for you and the team to dive into the research. And now we're gonna give you um, an insight into how this game was built and we're gonna play it later. Um, so first of all, there are three modules, three elements. And that can be uh, customized according to whatever topic or research content that you want the team to play. Um, the ones that we put research on, the, the two modules is the, the world and trend and the action-based character. So world and trends um, establish the, the setting or the environment that you're supposed to, to look into to explore. And the action-based characters are based on insights of um, your users, your stakeholders. These are characters are the ones that you would be played as. And then we have the missions and scenarios, which is um, like a mechanic that allows you to um, explore the insights of the users and the, the trends in the world. So we build this game together with our clients, with our team to transform research into the game elements, especially the world and the characters that's based on the research. Yeah. So one by one then, world building is key to translating research into the game. So the contents of the world depend on the research outcomes. Um, trends uh, or findings or insights, they're all highlighted as a gameplay element like the trend cards that you see here. Um, but it's not just trends. So you're constructing the play materials out of the key findings that you want the participants to explore. So that could be anything. Uh, user insights, new market or use case opportunities, or even imagining a new organizational structure. So you can think of world building like setting the stage. And so if world building is setting the stage, writing missions and scenarios is like creating the drama. Uh, the story is woven of multiple missions. Uh, you can think of those in service design terms as user journeys or in UX terms as jobs to be done. Uh, but these missions are basically challenge scenarios for the players and they provide the learning delivered in story format that your team needs to know to understand the context and explore the unexpected. Uh, but in the game, you know, unlike a user journey, you can change the outcome of the journey. So characters take actions within the missions and the mechanic of rolling dice is introduced and promotes explorations through the story via improvisation. Right, and if you think about characters, you of course might think of personas, and that's not wrong because that's what it's based on. A good personas normally should allow you and the team to explore the product or the service in, or the situation with a new understanding. You should see it differently from your user perspective. But in the worst case, 
which is most of the cases, um, it is presented like a poster and disappeared shortly after the first stage of the project. You know, personas should actually help you to decide um, to make decision throughout the product development, but they can't help you if um, they're forgettable and it's hard to relate. So that's why we have this action-based personas, which um, let you take the action, which is like a backbone of the persona um, in the role of the users that you want to explore. And you do that throughout the course of the game. So it doesn't matter um, what they look like, what's on their purse, what car they drives, um, they drive, um, it is more about what they can do. Yeah, so now this right here, what you see, this is one of the main activities we'll be doing today. Uh, because what happens within the game is we present an archetype. Um, so it's not a persona yet, it's just an archetype. Um, it's got motivations, fears, goals, etc. but it's, it's not like a person yet. Uh, then what we do is we let the players fill it in with details that turn it into a persona. Uh, so we provide the psychographics uh, to ground the character in, and we share what their main actions are with these action cards. And then players will fill in things like their backstory, their quirks, their occupation, their hobbies, uh, their temperament as a person. And that way within this framework provided there's no there's no wrong answer because, you know, spoiler, spoiler alert, people are incredibly diverse, you know, there's no wrong answer. Right. And we know that this dressing up part is a fun part is the part that um, engage people to the character, it helped participant to 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 be more engaged to be more um, empathetic, um, because they create this character. That's why in the game, we still leave the space for people to to build this um, paint them as you like and you write them to explore the scene of the game. Um, it's not just fun, it is also active learning because um, the material that we provide in the template is actually from the research and you actually draw those materials to build your character. Yeah, so if you look at the different levels of persona we've provided in this new format here, uh, it looks like this. So you're starting with an archetype, you're, it's pretty superficial at this moment. Um, but then you're adding unique qualities. So then you're turning your archetype into a character. Uh, then you're adding a goal, a job to be done with the missions. And you know, then you've got a character on a mission. And finally, and this is where you wanna be, uh, you add your actions. So then you've got a character with unique qualities, a persona that can help you make decisions and take action. Mm -hmm. So, Finally, how we play. So how these all elements are coming together, um, it is based on three steps. That is describe, decide, and roll. And Molly, can and so, yeah, so, uh, yeah. so it's a 20 sided dice with a scale here. You've got a wild success if you roll a 20. You succeed if you get a 15 and it's an utter failure with a one. Uh, you can, if you know some basic probability, you know then that it's hard to succeed with this situation. Uh, it's, you know, not likely that you're going to roll higher, 15 or higher. But that's the point because then we're getting participants to explore what happens when things go wrong, which too often is a little too hard to bring up in a normal conversation. Mm -hmm. um, so to understand how we would apply this. Uh, we've got this case study of an e-commerce uh, client. And, you know, we've got our characters. This time for the archetypes provided, we've got the private user. This is again for e-commerce. We've got a remote worker. We've got an office lead, a retailer, and an architect. And these are our archetypes. Uh, and then you can see in the little circles provided, we gave a short, short description about them. And we've got their actions. Uh, so that's what we provide, and then we let people play out as those characters with the simple descriptions. Uh, for the <clears throat> mission we provided, really simple, it's just activation. Uh, the challenge is that there's too many companies to choose from online, and we need our remote workers to get set up at home. How can we get their attention in order to help them establish home offices? So what happened in this one session was the person playing the office lead they, their action was uh, share options with the company. So they said, I'm going to share options for uh, all of my employees, what they can purchase. And they used the card 
uh, the insight part in this case, which was that there's a need for vivid product showcasing online. So they're like, all right, I'm going to share this vivid product showcasing, uh, send to all the employees what furniture items they can purchase. They rolled, they got an eight, uh, so they failed. And so in that storyline, what happened was when they tried to share all of these options with employees, uh, some of the employees were looking at more expensive items and they bought furniture that was outside of the budget, right? So then another example was one person was playing the retailer. And so the retailer said, okay, okay, I see what just happened there. And they say, well, I know that there's this insight that there's an importance for strong customer loyalty programs and benefits. Um, and I saw how that just failed. So I'm gonna say that we can showcase products uh, and we're going to do it in a way that the client gets like a specific portal for them to share it with their employees and kind of give them this benefit of a, a better viewing platform as a retailer. And they rolled a 14 uh, and you get a bonus for the trend cards. And so they had a 15 total, so that succeeded. So that's how you combine the trend cards, the actions and your character. And then we have another case study, which is the future smart city. Yeah, and this second case is what we, we're going to play today. Um, it is our off the shelf smart city um, version where we, this is the, the version that we developed to be, to, to be able to apply to like two different types of clients because we know when we work with the clients, we often work with people who envision new products. So um, they're talking about like new technologies, um, new markets and so on. So we developed this off the shelf game that we could um, meet any client's need or um, client situation because at some point everyone will have to work with like smart technologies. So to help the clients envision the future solution, we created personas that could be used in any type of project um, when it's like all around um, smart technologies in the um, future. And we base our characters um, for this case on um, the, the book by Andrew Keane is called How to Fix the Future. It's, um, it's about how wicked problems of the future can be solved by when people, uh, when business, social responsibility, innovation, education, and regulation can work together in unison. We translated these concepts into five characters and yeah, you will get to know them in a, in a bit. Yeah, so the steps we're doing, we're going to get into characters, these, these ones we just explained here. Um, getting into characters means you build the persona out of the archetype provided. Next, we're going to get to know the world that we will be playing in, this uh, future smart city world, and we'll introduce you to the world. Then you will face a ch challenge scenario, take action, build a story together, and roll to see what the outcomes are. Right. So yes, now really let's play. Um, oh, sorry. I just want to show what we're going to do. Um, is a little bit less than one and a half hour now, but we'll, I'm, I'm sure we can speed up. So we're gonna do world building for five minutes. I'm gonna tell you a story about the world in Telecity. And then we're gonna break into um, groups and we're gonna build the characters together. And then we're gonna come back and then we'll do um, the mission. So without further ado, I hope everyone is on the board. 15, where are the other three? You guys um, want to just observe or? Um, Co, I think one person is double in the call. I think at least I saw the name okay. twice. And then there's also SCN in the call, right? Ah, okay, so. So I'm not, but then there should still one be missing, but. All right. Good. Um, since everyone is on the board now, we are at world building and I would ask you guys to follow me by clicking on the um, this one essay or um, click accept because I ask everyone to follow. Um, I move this here. So, moment. let me organize my screen. Yes, world building. Um, Remember that we are playing this um, in, within the world of research about the future and the smart technology. It is um, 
um, we're, we're encouraging people to use the, the, these different forces as a character to make things, uh, to make new, new changes, to um, um, enforce new world, a new technology within um, this Intel city. Um, city. Sorry. Um, so <laughs> the story is set in Intel city is a future city driven by data and smart technologies. It is set um, in the next five minutes, I'm going to explain to you what are um, different aspects, different trends that happen in the city. And um, to make it more interactive, you can take notes. And at the end, we will allow you some time to reflect on what you just heard and what you find interesting, what trends, what other trends or other events that you think could be part of the story. So. Welcome to IntelliCity, right. Um, yes, so IntelliCity, it is an exceptionally smart city established in 2025 and is built upon the remains of an old European town. It was designed to meet the needs of migration and expansion and retrofitted with all the latest technology to best engage citizens, enhance, enhance livability, um, sustainability, inclusivity, and all the while using data to respond to changes, both small and large. It is super neat. And these are all done using this, the um, data. It sounds like a campaign sweet talk, but it's real. Um, being smart means sensors everywhere. You as much as sneeze in the park downtown and the hospital uptown would know what kind of virus you caught. All of this data is run and shared, um, which means the government can take a better decision, um, like telling you to self-quarantine for a week um, and not three, three days late. So they know exactly when you caught the virus and the next minute you got um, the message. Um, we voluntarily transmit our data to the state in order to get recognition. And in some cases, benefits. Data for what it all everything is measured and connected infrastructure was designed and with this automation and iteration in mind with eyes ears and sensors everywhere needless to say crime is quite low um, for that matter also illiteracy traffic congestion and most diseases so we're um, close to superhuman in this intel city and um, of course the money is still making the world go goes round um, but we've gotten uh, so much better. We've gotten more creative with it and we've gotten more critical as well. Um, to make people accountable, sharing economy, sharing systems flourish when the object being shared knows who broke it. So self-driving self -driving cars, for example, are unused by night by their owners that can be um, serviced to goose logistic um, and all the movement is tracked. So the local economy is, is thriving from this um, sharing platform. Open data is leveraged by businesses and data brokers alike, and the sharing and selling of more exotic information is, is significant in the economy. Data forward is like cash forward. Those who get more social services, so like beyond basic universal income, are required to share more of their sensitive data. You can say if it's fair or not, um, but this this is what happened in IntelliCity. Um, in terms of human relationship, um, human are uh, working hand in hand with the AI to select the best solution for the city, like service service scoring, for example, or facilities or education. Um, like that time when aging population increased, social score bonus points were offered to those who volunteer to do community work with the elderly. The incentives are not just monetary based, but also you gain knowledge, gain new, new skills by um, joining the, the campaign. They combined it with sensitivity project-based learning course and the participants received social, social points as well as professional development credits. And yeah, that's a win-win situation. You get the knowledge and you also get um, score. In terms of environment, um, it is a glorious data-driven life in Intel City, but sadly, not all are gold. 
the result of the luxurious lifestyle in the past decade has caused global warming. Natural catastrophe is um, almost a monthly norm, but people have adopted and so is the system. We share, we support sustainability, all the kinds of progressive humanitarian, uh, humanitarian and environmental activities is topped off with data management to make them work. Sensors detect pollution and bacteria in the public space and all this knowledge is made public. Data can very well form a pro-environmental behavior within the Intel city. You'd be surprised like what shame can do for behavioral change. Companies are scored like people, they're getting points uh, and incentives for reducing carbon emissions or using more sustainable materials and production and so on. So in conclusion, um, this city is driven by data and smart technologies. So, but all the while they're fighting the backlash of the overconsumption in the last decade, last century. And that is what we're about to explore today. How could smart city handle the future of pandemic? Um, can technology of the future make living through quarantine more livable? And before we move on, let's see what other ideas that you have. Um, I will give maybe three minutes or two minutes. Um, after you hear the stories, um, what else do you think fit into the story of IntelliCity? What kind of trends, what events, or what activities of people do in IntelliCity? So just drop it here on the yellow post-its. Or imagine if you are in Intel City, which you will in the next one hour and 15 minutes, um, what kind of life you're living. So we have public shaming. Question mark, question mark. <laughs> <laughs> Mental health anxiety from being scored, yeah. You get benefits for volunteering data. Yes, it's scary. Personalized entertainment. Yeah. I would love to have Beyonce in my kitchen office right now. Companies being scored is good, yeah. They should be responsible of what they're producing. All right. Um, that's a lot of ideas. Um, Keep those ideas in mind. Um, you can come back and, and um, look at it. Now we're going to play. I just want to say, though, I really love the remote walks in the park. Yeah. Really nice. I would do a remote walk in the park. Yeah, and centralized risks of failure. So now it's playtime. Um, you should follow us into the board, into the first board. Um, first of all, we're gonna do a character building. So what is character building? This is this part of the, um, this part of the board, the, the outer outline part of the board. And we have Miranda, Alex, Kara, Gana, and Justus. And these people like Captain Planet work together to make changes in the world. So um, I will break you guys into groups and what we're going to do, I'm gonna run through this um, exercise. So what we're gonna do is um, what is given here is um, psycho 
psychographic of, uh, of our character, like what are their beliefs, what are their fears, what are their motivations and what are their goals in life. And now we also have the actions prepared for you. So this is what um, you would use during the play. Then we also have trends that these um, characters are normally using. And what, would, what you have to do is um, while you're reading or getting information about their um, psycho psychographic skills and trends, you can do exactly the same like um, what we just did with the world, write down some, some like um, information that you think this person like Miranda would do um, if you were her. Why does she um, have these skills? Why does she have this kind type of fears or motivations? And then from there, we're going to write the background story together. So we're gonna break into five groups and um, Jess and Alessandra, Josie and Abby will help you to uh, build the stories, the background stories together. How is it? Really nice. <laughs> oh, I see you guys have a long story. <laughs> and we were only starting, by the way. <laughs> yeah, we could have, you know, continued. <laughs> yeah, we could have uh, written down his whole life story. <laughs> <laughs> and I saw my type typo mistake. Hmm. Yeah, it's not Kara's story. It's Justus. No, but it's Justus. Way. <laughs> and I try to change it, and I end up uh, moving the board. Ah, uh, yeah. No, it's fine. We found our way. So is everyone back? Does everyone know that we they have to actively leave the room? No, they don't have to. They they oh. will be taken back. Oh, the because way. we left the room. Yeah, yeah you can you can click leave the room or you can. Ah, okay. Yeah. Hello. Hello. Hi. Hey. Back. I think everyone is back and everyone is on the board. Um, cool. So next thing we would do, so I, I forgot to introduce myself as um, I'm a game master. And this is very important for the game because we, you have the, the game master who takes everyone around throughout um, the game, improvising stories and so on. Um, how, how was it? Was it easy, difficult, confusing? You can turn on it's your good. microphone, talk to us. It was fun. It was fun. It was fun, yeah. But I would love to, I would have loved to have a little more time actually, but that's usually the yeah, case. Yes, always. <laughs> There's never enough time to build the story. So why don't you start? Oh, well, <laughs> yeah, sure, I'll do that. Um, I'll switch to the mirror because then it's a bit closer for me to read. Yeah, mm -hmm. so um, now we've met Guna um, here. Mm -hmm. Um, Guna, as his name says, uh, has a strong need for regulations and for safety. So um, one of his strong beliefs is that um, everything needs a regulation so that it works um, for everyone and everyone is safe. Um, and that's what he wants to ensure, that everyone stays healthy, that he lives in a stable system. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, it makes sense that one of his biggest fears is uncontrolled change and decision making. So um, preventing chaos is one of the big things and we were wondering uh, where where that came from. And we thought about his background story if you go down to, to number four. Um, and yeah, we thought maybe um, as a child, uh, his grandparents lived somewhere else and he visited them um, one day and yeah, that one day his parents were attacked by strangers and he couldn't do anything. He was so small and he didn't know what was going on and he felt very unsafe and helpless. And yeah, that's, this led to his fear and his desire for this strong regulations that mm. give safety. Mm. Um, He's Batman. Sorry? Yeah, He's Batman. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Maybe that's a, actually a good, yeah, a good uh, thing to talk about because we were not, we, we didn't have a good idea so far what he's doing today, what his job is, what he works as. We so also guys, don't know what Batman does. <laughs> but he's rich. He's a billionaire. He's a philanthropist. Yeah. A vigilante. Nice. So Gunnar, mm -hmm. so um, he wants to change the world because of uh, of the unfortunate. Accident. Yeah, he's. 
Very for sad. me, he seems to be like someone who um, really wants to make sure that, you know, if you if you send a package, it's really safely, to, like every fragile mm -hmm. item is packed in very safely and would stay safe. Mm -hmm. So that's his job maybe? Like he's the like postal overseer? He's the DSL guy. But, yeah. like, but like the top of it. Yeah. Okay, yeah. I'll just type that in. That's fine with you guys. <laughs> That's awesome. Thank you, Gana. Who wants to introduce yourself next? Or I choose. <laughs> Justus, you have quite a long story. <laughs> yes. I'll be introducing Justus. Well, we discussed it with Jess, and uh, we feel that Justus is a kind of, a, you know, a postmodernist, but in the stealth mode. Uh, <laughs> on one hand, he's the guy who who wants to break the rules and uh, he mm -hmm. actually wants to take the world to the new future by technology so on, so, so on and so forth. But at the same time, uh, he always wants to have a definite answer. So he still believes in the science, he still believes. Mm -hmm. Although he is actually, his innovation might ruin the world one, one day. And then we thought, um, so on, on one hand, creating something new, being in a protest mode is very important for him. So this is how he lives. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, he still well, yeah. wants the world to be uh, a bit predictable, to have a lot of I think that's both yeah. figuring out her, her tech. I, I just needed her though. Yeah, yeah, if we can mute maybe for yeah. me. Yeah, now I'll the story. So, and basically, of course, uh, this didn't happen by accident. Uh, this was, this is how he was born, more or less. Mm -hmm. His mother was crying when he was three because he couldn't uh, have him obey what she's telling him. He wouldn't take no from her. Uh, in the school, it was all the same, but he was smart enough not to invoke uh, unnecessary conflict. He wasn't doing the homework, but he was mm -hmm. in the goal. He just needed to pass. And uh, then he thought, okay, maybe university is better. No, it was no better. So he dropped out a couple of times, but eventually he needed a job, he needed some money. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, he realized uh, operations is not for him, something boring is not for him. He would rather go for creating something new. This is what he was good at. Mm -hmm. And learned that in this uh, you know, adult world, it is called innovation. Okay, so mm -hmm. the innovation. he is a tech guy, he is a tech mm -hmm. guru. And um, how he found himself uh, eventually doing a startup, uh, startupish things and being a technical consultant for startups. Cool. That's his story. Oh, so he's like um, kind of a, against the system. Um, a little yeah. bit. Or he has his own system, let's say. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he's looking for a sense of for a sense yes. of something and still not reaching that. And and there is mm -hmm. we wanted to create more drama actually. And he well he can create drama during the play. Uh, yeah. <laughs> he, he has this internal uh, conflict. He he is doing no, he's on the risky side of life, doing the base jumping, you know, probably missing some friendship. So he is a lonely wolf and uh, something mm -hmm. evolving. We'll see how he tackles the middle life crisis. Oh, we'll see. <laughs> Sounds familiar. Okay. <laughs> um, Alex, thank you, um, Eustus. Now we move to Alex, so the so social responsible person. Oh, yeah. Who is this person? And uh, she, as a child, child, she was curious and friendly to nature. Mm -hmm. She was hugging trees, literally. Oh, mm -hmm. oh my God. And normally the parks <laughs> were preserved, but one day they chopped down her forest. Oh no. Uh, her parents were big activists, uh, showed her what it, showed her what it meant to protest. So now she knew. I have to save the so forest. I have to save the planet, mm -hmm. uh, which lead her to her belief in taking care of nature. She created a program that turns waste and trash into clean energy. That is really good because we have a mm -hmm. lot of waste and garbage in this world. Mm -hmm. um, and in her free time, they can be found in her flora garden doing um, she is having beekeeping. Pretty beekeeping. So she is a person that um, 
has Fridays for Fun Bonfires. She's inspired of Greta Thunberg, of course. Mm -hmm. They're really good friends. Mm -hmm. uh, and something she really likes to do is hide for Big Sister. And when I call talk about Big Sister, I mean the, the all connecting everything. She go down under the radar. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you want to have some free time. She don't want everything to be connected. Ah, okay. So she found the tunnel of the yeah. intensity. Yeah. She's really smart, by the way. Mm -hmm. I think that was it. Yeah. yeah, she has a robot, uh, a smart robot friend, of course. Robot or ro rolling boat? Robot, robot. Robot. Robot, robot. yeah. Mm -hmm. Nice. Yeah. Well, so she's like social responsible, but she's still friend with the technology somehow. Yeah, so she used technology smart. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you, Alex. Now we move on to Miranda. So let me introduce you to Miranda, the master business builder. Mm -hmm. So she loves working in business and she's quite good at making money and spawning uh, business trends. Um, as a child, Miranda was bored and frustrated with the education system because she was always a top student. Um, and it didn't really meet all her student needs or even some of her um, friends' needs. And she could see the system, there, there was inequality in the system that just wasn't working. So she had that systemic overview. She wants to be an influencer and she's very good at being able to spot trends and work with those trends. Mm -hmm. um, and she has many people following her. She's a natural leader. Mm -hmm. She likes to, to introduce new stuff, whether that is a new policy, a new way of being, a new way of doing business. She's financially stable because she understands how money works. Um, she has an ability to mobilise a team and she can uh, really motivate a team um, mm -hmm. towards a big goal and a big vision. So she's very, very strategic. Mm -hmm. she, can, she can be impatient with people who are not open to taking risks. So she has a very high risk profile. Um, she's probably working as an entrepreneur um, and, has or, and or has her own consultancy business where she's consulting to business um, and senior management. Mm -hmm. um, and probably stays away from traditional corporations because it's just mm -hmm. too boring to retain and too difficult to, to, to disrupt. So she, just her as, as an entity, is a startup because she yep. does everything herself. Yes. <laughs> wow, that's well, she knows she fun. knows how business works and she's, she's that systemic and strategic. So mm -hmm. I don't think that she would be a good fit into corporate because corporate mm -hmm. wants to put you in a box and she doesn't mm -hmm. like being in a box. Mm -hmm. So she would be like the the startup, like the seed or like Serie A, and then after as a corporate, she quit. So okay. yes, yes. Nice. So she's not. She doesn't stay in one in one mm -hmm. structure for very long. She likes to set it up and then move on. Well, thank you, Miranda. We'll see how you um, how you build your startup in the in the game. <laughs> um, now the last one, Kara, the TED Talker the educator yep so Kara, the educator so she's a very active uh, tough um, woman who really strongly believe in uh, education and it's uh, we must leave better children for our, our better world and mm -hmm. everyone has potential and they simply need to be activated in the right way and growth comes naturally and must be nurtured not forced Mm -hmm. um and um yeah so she really uh gets motivated by nurturing ta talent helping people discover uh, love of learning opening mm -hmm. up people's minds to new ideas um so we thought about you know she probably had um access to lower education quality education as she grew up but then one day she met, you know, at a classroom, somebody came in and talk about how education um, can really open up the doors to everyone. So if you study, if you get a good quality education, you can really uh, build a better world. So she mm -hmm. has a strong belief in that. Mm -hmm. And um, now she's a really free spirited person. She works as a freelancer. It's not just doing one thing. She, she teaches, but she also a freelancer. 
and uh, loves to help people. And that's, um, she's not about money making. It's, it's really collaborative, you know, uh, making the place better, society better. And um, yeah, she, she can be doing, be involved in uh, several different projects at the same time. So she's a very active person. Mm -hmm. Oh, too bad Kara did not meet Eustace when he was young and convince him to get into this. <laughs> <laughs> or did you guys meet? Yeah. What do you think? Right, well, probably. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's a nice story. <laughs> mm -hmm. All right, um, so what's next is now that you know your character. Um, I don't know if we have time for two missions actually, but um, what do you think Molly, we can try to do both in one mission? Um, I think we could go straight to the second one. Yeah. Okay. Yep. So the boy to the right, everyone, or just click um, follow. Just follow S A. Last we follow, we just go directly to the right one. Um, well, I hope you remember. You can always go back and refer to your character. But now we're gonna take action, and um, the mission that you guys come together today with your special powers working together to make changes, and the change that we would like to see today is that um, we'd like to see you host an engaging conference like this um, that is remote friendly because you know we, we got a new virus and it hit us. Um, it came with the, the tsunami wave that we got from, um, from this global warming crisis. And so um, we got this new virus and sadly everyone has to go in quarantine and yeah, how do you make an engaging conference um, to the town people? So you, with your special power, how would you do that? So what you would do is um, you're gonna go into a breakout room again and you go, you're going to um, discuss what actions you want to take from this uh, action cards and uh, if possible, what kind of trends that support your action, for example, um, Kara might do a TED talk and she would use, I don't know, um, a personalized education. So she, 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 she's doing TED talk with this personalized content so that um, the things she say um, is appear to, to different groups of people in a different tone of voice. So she like talking to, to people um, with like, kind of like a, um, personalized way. So you think about what actions that um, this person would do and what trends and what technology that could support this action. And what you can do more, uh, first of all, when you're in the back breakout room, you think about this. And now when we come back, you can also think, so each one of you would present your, um, your, your, your outcomes or your, skill, uh, your actions and your trends. And the rest of the team, uh, the rest of the, the character can think about how you could support this action. But um, that is something that we do um, together in the board. For, first of all, what actions you can do, what trends you uh, support your action. And we'll come back in, um, is five minutes too late? Too late, too, too late. Okay. I think we can do it in five. Yeah, I think you can do it in five. Let's try it. All right, um, see you in five minutes. I think you can click join or why? Why are you guys still here? I didn't get anything for the ah, wait. breakout. Hmm. That's weird. Well, you guys can do it here. You guys are, no, she's gone. Hello, Bo. Hello, hello. Mm. 
you have to click join uh, the group. Hmm. Well, um, Hello. Hi, we're back first. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Ooh, I see some people use two trends. <laughs> Very good. But it's good that we are small teams because normally we'll, we'll, when we play, we, you know, like in a round table, we play together, we can discuss, we don't have to wait um, like for each one to talk. Uh, you know, like we can talk over each other and like um, throwing ideas easier. Um, so normally we would, um, yeah, with a small team, I think it's easier. We, we also play with like bigger teams and I think that was difficult to, to like share ideas. Nice. Is everyone here? Hello again. Hello. Hey. Uh, I think we're all here, right? Yeah, Molly's here. Yes, here. Are we missing Josie? Is there? And mm -hmm. yeah. is there? Okay. Um, no, I have to share my screen again. But and anyways, you guys are on the board. Mm -hmm. Also, just follow us. Not us to be follow. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna. Um, that was the describe part. I describe the situation, you decide what you want to do, you decide which trends you would use, which um, actions you would use, and now we're going to roll. So normally we do like in a round table, we physically together, we have a dice, but we don't have a dice here that um, everyone can roll in this board. So I'm going to roll for you guys um, using Google dice. <laughs> um, as Molly already explained, um, the dice, you have to beat 15 to, to um, to to succeed in in your your action so um what about we go from from uh the last one last time that was Kara? oh a little bit about since normally we would play two rounds but um the time now is not ideal so what we would like you to try is um when Kara is telling her her story her actions and her trends think about how you can um, contribute to her actions. So you can contribute to her action by your action. For example, she wants to start a discussion. Gunnar, you can think about 
how your policy um, actions can help her doing her thing easier? Or is there any trend from your, um, your trends uh, deck that could help her action? Sanders, easy to understand? You can think about it, so everyone can think about it as well. All right. Um, should we mention it immediately after? Yeah, so when Kara said that she would do this and you can just raise your hand and say, oh, I can support you with this and that. Okay, good. Mm -hmm. And it's not just Ghana, right? Eustace, um, Alex and Miranda, you're also very welcome to help Miranda succeed her, her um, action. So Miranda, you wanna tell us about your, your action? Do we start with Kara or with Miranda? Oh, sorry, Kara. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. So um, when we were discussing about uh, Carla's action, uh, we think Carla wants to uh, uh, because Carla was inspired when she when she was little by hearing a speech. So mm -hmm. she would think, what if what if she could use technology and make the the knowledge more affordable and access mm -hmm. more accessible to people who has less resources. And then she can intrigue people to start a conversation, to discuss different things, uh, to make different impact. So I think we pick uh, the trends of IoT because mm -hmm. we believe uh, uh, the technology could make the knowledge more afford affordable and more mm -hmm. accessible uh, to people. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, I think that's, that's basically the action that Carla wants to take. Okay, so Carla wants to start a discussion to kind of reform the um, the education? Yes. So yeah. you reform the education so that it's more accessible um, through this internet of things. That means you don't have to be in the same place on taking part in the conference like this. Doesn't have to be to this. Okay. So uh, anyone wants to support Kara? Yes, I can. Miranda can support that because Miranda is actually Cara, offering remote. Oh, sorry. That's okay. <laughs> I was just th thought I was on mute because um, Miranda's offering report um, remote service subscription model mm -hmm. to to match the speakers and presenters with students and participants for, for learning opportunities and networking. Mm -hmm. So, um, is there any 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 trend cards or actions that you want to? You can move it to to Cara space. Um. I think it's the sharing economy as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sounds sounds good. Sounds fitting. Oh, we have the gunner uh, chime in with the uh, smart government. How would yeah. you contribute, Ghana? Um, I thought it uh, would be a good idea to yeah give also access to um, to the public and to mm. the citizens to this topic. So um, there, um, yeah, we would help out with um, our smart government mm -hmm. um, capabilities. Nice. So you, your, your smart um, government facility would um, help Kara. And Eustace, you want to help her optimize technology. That could not be better. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, OK, we have a lot of contribution. Let's see. Um, I'm going to roll dice for you. So. One, two, three. No, that's wrong. Roll again. Nine. That's you use this trend card of Internet of Things that um, plus one to nine, that's 10. And sharing economy would be 11. And the smart government support uh, would be, um, where is it? I'm at 12. <laughs> and optimized technology from Eustos would make it 14. So you are. You almost beat it, but you did not. So um, I think what is missing, though, is maybe a good campaign that people really um, receive your, your message. So you have all the technology, you have facilities, everything ready. But what's missing is probably like um, a flyer <laughs> or a banner that um, people know, that, OK, this is a new platform that, um, pe that, that I can get education. I can. Um, I can join like education events like this from the comfort of my home. So I'm um, sorry, Kara, but you failed this one. Um, move on to Miranda. 
we got um, we really have to speed up <laughs> but um miranda do you want to tell us your action yes so miranda's offering a subscription based model for for people who want to present and people who want to participate in a conference um, online conferences is what she's now proposing um, because it's also um, a green type of um, approach so less um, pollution with travel um, air, air, um, airlines it's more COVID safe you're opening the opportunity for more participants mm -hmm. um, and and in creating better revenue models mm -hmm. anyone wants to support Miranda in her new um platform does it need um identity ambiguity perhaps wow. the ability I to be anonymous that, uh, on this platform I maybe get that. more people involved yeah, yeah. good idea okay I'm going to give you this trend card then of the ability to have privacy online mm -hmm. So like you stay muted, kind of like you stay muted, <laughs> but yeah. you're observing the event. Mm. Uh huh. Kara comes in with immersive learning. How would you help uh, Miranda? Yeah, I thought the immersive learning VR could help the, the learners uh, or participants to be more engaged uh, in this divided environment. So, mm -hmm. Yeah. It fits very well. Anyone else? Otherwise, I will speed up and roll the dice. <laughs> I will roll the dice for you guys. Oh, wow. Nice. A 14, <laughs> and then you have so many trend cards. You have one, two, three, four. That is 18, almost, um, uh, how do you call it, Molly? Um, critical success. Critical success. <laughs> um, almost there. So um, your platform is blooming. People, uh, people love it. Um, apparently, they 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 get to know it easier. They they get to understand the, the how to use this platform easier than um, than Kara. That's too bad. So I think what is different is maybe you hire a designer. So <laughs> you know the secret how people would um, would uh, you 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 have also the the capital to like um, adapt the platform so that is more user-friendly and so people will adopt it and um, you get your money but people also get their conference that's awesome so Alex you want to tell us your action yeah do you want to go ahead is she muted maybe she's muted she's muted. I'm muted and wait no Okay, uh, we are talking about that engaging the community is a good way so we get a more engaging conference. And mm -hmm. how do we do that? Um, helping the people uh, with their daily routine or daily tasks. Maybe someone go out with my garbage over here uh, or uh, giving me some coffee. Uh, mm -hmm. So I get some help so I can focus on the conference. Oh, okay. That is our idea. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like sharing, um, sharing concent your yeah. Yeah, concentration. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Not, yeah. Yeah, that's cool. Um, who wants to help Alex get into conference? So she already has her ro robot robots uh, doing her task. I think you still can support her with um, AI for research and planning, maybe to kind of yeah. forecast what people mm. might want in what times it might be busy and yeah. Good idea. Mm -hmm. Then it's easier to focus also. So you can like better schedule your, mm -hmm. your, your task and your conference time. I think Miranda could help with the smart economy trends. So, you know, People can organize themselves also around the, the making the task easier and provide new services to that. Mm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like it. Actually, Eustace would like to play one more with the smart grid. <laughs> never, you know, ne never enough. <laughs> True. Mm -hmm. I like it. More engaging. <laughs> so you really use like the smart grid, smart. Um, 
kind of a sensor to and, and also the AI to help people organize around this uh, conference time. Well, it's a very um, important conference. So how, Ghana, how would you break the policy? Um, so um, I didn't take it as an action to break the policy, but I would uh, introduce a break policy so mm -hmm. that uh, there are enough yeah, breaks. Yeah. Oh. Oh. Smart kids. Smart kids. That's very the good. problem. You don't know when to break. You're like, okay, is it time now? No. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. So that, yeah, um, all the participants could also, you know, yeah, get some fresh energy, fresh air. Um, yeah, have a break. Really good interpretation of the action card. <laughs> yeah. And of course, uh, smart drones can also help with all the, yeah, robotics. Oh. Um, I actually. could have imagined people now like in, on a conference um, outside, like in the wood because Alex likes her garden and, <laughs> and like there's a drone around and people are like censored and scheduled around um, with the AI and the smart grid. Interesting. Like it's kind of like open air concert somehow for me now. <laughs> So um, let's see how successful this is. I'm gonna roll for you guys. Sorry? Woo! Oh, you yes. guys are off the roof. Critical oh success. Gosh. Everybody loves the packages in yeah. the robot service. <laughs> I would really love to see how this like play out later on when you like, still you're like observed by everything, um, but then you're like super self-organized and like now is my conference time and now is my break time. Very good. Um, Eustus, yeah. it's your turn. Yeah, yeah. Well, you, you won't be disappointed by Eustus. <laughs> you remember he is, um, has this protest nature. So despite mm -hmm. everything, he decided to help. Oh, uh, no. Yes. <laughs> uh, the, the conference in person, of course. Of course, OK. <laughs> of course the conference. And uh, yes, that's, uh, that's a real terrific challenge that he was looking for the whole uh, his life. So he will use all kinds of technology and of course the AI and uh, the smart sensors. Mm -hmm. he, he has a vision that of course uh, he can use the AI to predict uh, if, um, you know, if, if any danger is coming and smart sensor to do the same. But he also believes that he can blend these two things into one, which is still unimaginable, but will work eventually so that it's just possible to help it in person because that's the, the one that provides the real rich experience. Okay. I would, sorry. No, I would give him the smart uh, healthcare card. So yeah. Yeah, people know when they're uh, ill or when they're good health. Nice. Thank you. I would also, I would also give, give... Go ahead. I, I would also give the predictive maintenance. Um, mm -hmm. oh, yeah. That could be really helpful for us. <laughs> Wow. Uh, anyone, has any, anyone has any emergency cards, you know, just in case the innovation goes wrong? <laughs> <laughs> it's an experiment as always for Eustace. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, some portable hospital maybe, you know. Kara, yeah, just add one, pro uh, provide direction there, because in case something goes wrong, <laughs> you have some direction. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. I, uh, oh, nice. We need the backup. Let's so the see. ambulance would go like the correct route. <laughs> Uh -huh. Yeah, I think Anna maybe can help with that using the smart mobility and smart parking mm -hmm. so to make sure everyone is mm -hmm. like. Mm -hmm. yeah. At least we can cool. evacuate everyone. Like everyone is taking a risk uh, to meet is gonna is probably super special. This could be like a rave, <laughs> but a very well organized rave. Um, I think this one has to be successful. So many supporter. Um, Pro. 11, wait, yeah. one, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, that's 17. So you successfully yeah. bring people together um, <laughs> in the same place and everyone is healthy thanks to all the technology. Um, yeah, if you think about it, it's crazy. If you if you would just, I'm in quarantine now, if, if I would be able to meet friends because I really need it, it's been almost a week. Um, but I can't imagine. <laughs> All right. Um, Ghana, the last one. Yes. Uh, Ghana is uh, quite a pessimistic person. So like uh, just as he thinks about things that could go wrong 
and uh, that is why he takes the position of of a criminal who would like to yeah interfere with the conference who would like to steal data and information from the people so um, he works with his wearable technology and every participant gets a little package um, with a safety bracelet for example mm -hmm. that yeah, would make their internet connection uh, in their place they are in safe uh -huh. mm -hmm. Anyone wants to support Kana stealing <laughs> the data? <laughs> Remote services? No, no, no. Yeah. He's not. He's not stealing. Oh, yeah. sorry, sorry. He's like he's like giving uh, participants like a portable firewall so that their ah, internet is very safe and right. their identity is very diverse. All right. So actually I want to throw this and inflict shame. I don't know why, but I think it's fun. <laughs> <laughs> he's inflicting shame so that people wear the bracelet. Yeah, yeah could be. even if they don't have to protect anything or they're not worried about their data, they should do it for everyone. Yeah. It would be have, you could have some explanation for my uh, throwing card. Of course, That's I got fact. you. I got you. <laughs> it would be funny if people wear it but turn it off. So, <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm yeah. on you. It's like, Alex, I've got it. Um, anything else? We'll do the AI and blockchain. Mm -hmm. So that you um, you can trace if the data is leaking, yeah. who leaks it. Mm -hmm. And we'll use AI to predict, uh, to, to basically create good anti-fraud mechanism. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the remote service? I think remote services was for who, who dropped it there or did oh, I did I did so the remote services is also being able to, to monitor what the data goes back with ah, mm -hmm. right Ooh, you guys very good team even yeah. though like your character is sometimes confusing um but you support a lot oh, oh. <laughs> but let's see so you have one two three four five six well, um, nine, you did not win. Like I said, people wear it, but they're so, um, uh, how do you call it, skeptical about this device. They're like, again, like I already have this device that um, con connects me to, to, the, to the conference. And now this one again, I'm just gonna turn it off. I don't believe in this guy. He's just um, a, a, a DHL guy. <laughs> the control freak. Yeah, he's a control freak and he packaged things for a living. I'm not sure. So people did not take it and people just simply did not wear it or just turn it off. That's how you failed. Sorry, Ghana. But all in all, um, I think you guys won in this round because you have three winners, right? You yeah. have one um, critical success. So yeah, good job, guys. Sorry that we only have time for one round, but you get a you get a taste of how this is like a collaborative game that you explore the research, explore the trends, and explore like all the things together. <laughs> Thank you, Molly. <laughs> um, what we have left is five minutes. I don't know if we can be a little bit late. Is there a next session? Yeah. I think we have to ask Marie. Maria. No, I think the next one is in two hours' time. Yeah, that's correct. You can stay on a little bit longer. All right. Um, yeah, we we also have questions for you. Um, what do you think are the benefits? Or wait, I can show. I can um, do a takeaway. Actually, uh, this is a quick takeaway of um, after playing the game. So to summarize our session. So as you see, is um, this game. When you play games, you have you force a desired behavior. So in the game, you have rules, and the rules that we do is that you have to contribute to each other's um, action. You have to build on each other's story, and that's a rule that we want people to understand and and you know like do in the real project. That there's no one absolute answer um, from which department. It's more like you working together, um, interdisciplinary. And um, it's a yes and. So like like Kara would do this and Ghana come in like, yes, and I can contribute you with this action. That's the, the spirit of a teamwork that we want to, um, 
to, to enforce in this game. And yeah, the collaboration is important. This game is not the game that you compete with each other. It's not a strategic game. So like, like you already see um, in the real world as well. So like Kara is good at education, Ghana is good at policy. Um, together, we, we and five of you work together, you can, um, I keep thinking in German, um, encourage change. <laughs> um, so yeah. In the real world, it would be like, um, Molly is really good at presentation. I'm better at coding and together we win the pitch um, because we work together. That's the dynamic that we want to enforce. And um, it is pressure-free as you already see, it's, it's just a simulated situation. The, the situation is not even real or if it, I mean, like technically possible right now. So there's no right or wrong. Everything is runs by chance by the dice that you roll. So it's a safe space for you to, to take in how you would fail um, with like these technologies coming together. Um, it's great when it goes right, but you learn a lot when it goes wrong. And most importantly, it's not you, it's just the characters and it's in this simulated world. It is engaging and not because it is fun and you have to improvise, but because you are building it, uh, your character, your stories, and you're building it together, you get this Ikea effect that um, your character, um, for your character, which the Ikea effects um, explain when you love or you fall in love with something that you build, like the furniture, which is not the most beautiful expenses for furniture, but you, you build it yourself. Um, and that's the same with the characters and the story that you build. And um, lastly is the storytelling, it's based on storytelling as I think you guys are a really great group. Um, it's one of the best um, game that we play because you guys really like contribute with your stories and you come up with stories really quick. Um, yeah, it's more memorable now, of course, that you, you think about the situation and think about how you would um, put, to, put it together as a story is easier than uh, to remember then then you know when you get a, a deck of presentation like this is the trend now apply to your product so um a good example is that people love star wars because of because of the story but they forget to think about it that is actually is a crash course in fascism right yeah that's um that's the end of our our session but we would love to hear some discussions, some reflection. If you have any questions to ask, and if you don't, you can answer our questions in this part of the, the board. I have a question. Yes. Uh, in, in which situation did you apply the game? At, at which parts of the projects or to which type of the projects? Mm -hmm. I understand it might be a broad one, but just a few examples. So kind of like in the beginning, um, when you're aligning, when you're presenting, hey, here's the research that we've collected, we're going to present it into in a fun way, because we're also in that moment trying to get comfortable with the clients and, and establish this like ability to build upon each other and communicate freely and have a little fun, but also present, hey, here are some of the things that we found. Mm -hmm. I have a technical one on this. Is this after you've built the personas or it, it's, a, it's a way to build the person or finalize the personas? Or I think you... it's more like one way you present your personas. Um, so like at the end, you want to present this um, psycho psychographic, <laughs> psychographic of the personas, but um, instead of, of presenting it like, look, this is their belief, fear and so on. Um, this is what they can do in this game. And the same should happen when you build the product. This is what your users would do with your product. So um, it's, I think it's a more of a first step that you get into the character, get into the personas easier than just like a slide deck. Mm -hmm. would, would, the pro, uh, would, would the mission be somehow related? I'm sorry, I'm, that's the last No, one. no, yeah. no, it's fine. Uh, would, would the mission be related to um, this um, jobs or something like that of, of the personas? Of course, it's like the, the example that Molly presented before. I can show it again. Uh -huh. This is like um, very, so like the mission is um, how you um, go into online platform. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Many things. Yeah, I get it. 
Well, you can ask more questions or if you have any comments, we would really love to hear. So I have a question. Um, I understand the introduction of the dice. However, in situations where the dice um, is prevents a low score, how do you, as a facilitator, how do you position that and provide feedback? Like, are you looking for the flaws with, um, and then providing feedback based on the flaws if they haven't actually gotten that critical number? Mm -hmm. I would, I would just jump in and say that you can like shortcut it like that. You can be like, okay, I'm looking at this map and I see that only three people participated in this action. So I can instinctively say that it failed because of something related to the fourth person who didn't participate because you're trying to emphasize teamwork. But also we found that, you know, when you do so much research- Thank you very much. I have to- oh, okay. uh, Bye. Bye. Thank it was you. Really nice meeting you all. And hopefully, do we get some uh, material or something presentation afterwards? Yes. Yes. Really, yes. really nice. I enjoy this. I have to go and uh, Thank you. take a break. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Thank you. Nice meeting you. Um. Where was I? Um. Right. You can. You can. Yeah, so you can improvise it, but also you've done so much research, you kind of already know in the back of your head what can go wrong, right? But it's just about having the invitation and the conversation to share that. Like if, you, if you've done so much research into the area, you, you kind of have this wealth of knowledge that you've collected, but maybe it's not easy to all present in this very simplified way. And so you can pull upon that as you go. Mm -hmm. Okay, if you had more time, would you then spend time improving that that score, like engaging? Uh, because, like, I'm thinking of the of how I would use this type of game um, in bringing all various stakeholders in a room to try and get them to collaborate. Because as a change manager, I see it all the time that everyone works in silos. Um, and if there is one particular stakeholder that didn't garner very much support, could you use that as an opportunity to actually uncover why the, the others didn't consider that to be something that they would have contributed or like, could, would you have explored that a little bit more rather than just moving around? Yeah, yeah, I love that. And, and you definitely can play it that way where you're not just going from like mission to mission, but you're saying like, well, this bad thing happened how are we going to fix it? Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. The main you. thing is that, yeah, you, you, have, you, you have the space where they want, what you want the team to explore and that you, you maybe have the characters in this, the, this rolling dice that you allows you to explore when, how does it go when it's like fail and how does it go when it's success? Yeah. Have you actually used this uh, for public officials like politicians? Because I think they need it the most. We talked to one, <laughs> but um, it uh, sadly did not um, go through like all the way. We have some uh, some concepts uh, done, but um, it was not played. So yeah. Okay. Thank you. If you know of any. Yeah. Let's do it. <laughs> so what we do I is that we a, we do a customized game. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Yeah, so um, I am wondering how do you apply this game in a serious uh, corporate environment because some of the people came into the room or workshop with we are here for serious stuff. Mm -hmm. And when we start to play games or apply this kind of game, um, I, we can always see there are a certain percentage of people uh, they don't consider that seriously, although that we, we do have like really rich and, and also really solid content in that. Mm -hmm. So have you ever encountered these situations and how do you how do you bring them into this immersive experiences? I think it's all, it depends on the level of seriousness. Like um, what we're playing right now is very um playful i would say but like the 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 example that molly gave in the beginning this e-commerce one um the content is very um like orient topic oriented and it doesn't really leave you much room to like you know take a break uh like the break policy or um 
like all the fun stuff that we have now or like build a rocket as an as an action um but yes this is one of the the problem that um the people that we want to we want them to play doesn't feel like this is like go taking them anywhere and this is still um still like i think the, the biggest problem when we frame it as a game yeah so i think um this can be solved by the way that you present it so if we say this is um a little activity in a workshop that um, we want you to get to know the research in a different way. Um, you can always do it and then you frame it, the, the, all these actions and, and personas in a more serious way. So maybe you don't have like this so too lively um, illustrations or um, your trend cards are more serious and more like topic oriented. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Personally, I love playing games and we are trying to introduce like design strategy as like game design, but we always encounter like rejections. Uh, mm -hmm. But but I, I think that that would be a really good approach to try. Yeah, I think, I mean, you can call it different ways. Some people even um, uh, tell us that this, uh, this looks like a, a very big um, icebreaker. I mean, you can also present it that way. Um, I think at the end, you just have to speak the language of the team right, to like try to get it in. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, guys. This was great fun. Um, I'm, I'm wondering how did yeah, all this game or the initiative for, for Playbase actually come in? So why did you start developing it and using it? Mm, we had I think originally we have so um, like in the presentation we we are like full service digital agency so we constantly think about tools to to add to our design process and really originally is from um, the future thinking um, workshop that we had and Molly came in and she's um, the master of role playing games, like tabletop role playing game. And I thought, yeah, this is perfect because you can explore a lot um, through playing games. And um, I mean, if you can explore elves and, uh, and dragons, why can't you explore the future? And yeah, and that's also how it's come together. Mm -hmm. And, and just coming from uh, being service designers in an agency that's, you know, service design, but also we work so much with business and developers, and we know role play as a method, and it is really effective in getting engaged and like just testing things out. But yeah, how do we make it something that can happen, like mm -hmm. make it more approachable for people that are like, no, I don't want to role play. And yeah. And then we're just like, all right. Um, it also lets you role play really complex things. So like you could role play, you don't have to be a human, you know, like you could be like, this is the, the, the ocean or this is this forest. Like mm -hmm. we translated giant concepts like regulation um, and education into characters to play as. Uh, so you can really use anything because we made it a little bit more formatted added rules to make it more approachable yeah yeah it totally makes sense thank you guys any comments i would love to hear comments is there any part that is too long too um, confusing any part that you did not follow oh i have a, a question um mm -hmm. have you had any um any feedback using this game with people with disabilities? We haven't. But yeah. he is thinking about making it accessible, actually. Yeah. Um, I mean, what's cool is that, like, instinct, instantly, it's more accessible because it's, it's verbal. Okay. I mean, it's not fully accessible, right? Because then you've got audio um, and you've got speech impediments. Um, but at first, you're getting rid of role play can be hard if you have to stand up and act and move around like that. So if uh, you're paraplegic or if you have like bodily impediments, it is accessible in that way. Um, yeah, because so much is typed, you can be typing more of it and you don't have to be speaking it out. You can be writing it out also. I mean, oh, 
to be honest, we were hit with our first like, oh my gosh, we have to make this online when, when Corona and COVID hit. Um, but I like that you're thinking further ahead. You know, how do we make this properly, fully accessible? That's, I That's one that of the choice. projects I'm working on at the moment um, is um, helping people with a disability to do emergency evacuation plans because we're come, we're in it, we're just about to hit our summer. Mm -hmm. And we've we had devastating bushfires yeah. um, in the country areas, um, and so I've been talking to um, emergency services, and most of them said, you know, what causes us problems is the people just aren't prepared, and mm -hmm. it's the lack of pre-planning. Um, mm -hmm. And so one of the things we're now looking at is how do we how do we incentivise people with a disability to do the pre-planning? We wanted to introduce gamification, yeah. but the problem we're, we're hitting is because it's in cultural and regional areas, mm -hmm. a lot of them don't have access to techn reliable technology mm -hmm. um, and you know, having to cater for different disabilities. So mm -hmm. physical disabilities is probably easier, but how do you then adapt this gamification strategy for people with intellectual disabilities? Ooh. Wow, That's, um, that sounds really uh, exciting. <laughs> um, like, sounds like really exciting project. Um, to be honest, we haven't thought about it at all, but I think this could be another project, Molly. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think it's good because, you know, with the gamification or with this process, you're sort of simplifying everything a lot. Mm -hmm. Like you're abstracting it down to these key moments and you're just like, this action is, um, you know, run out the door. And, yeah. and so you're making it very bold and isolated. And I think that's actually a lot easier to, to process. So what about if you like if you are changing everything into like graphical elements and like your 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 turn cards or yeah turn cards and also the action cards or maybe you just um, limit the turn cards um, completely and combine everything in the in the action card and put everything as a graphic and then people can just like um because I think I, I really like the moment when uh, Francisca is just like, I would take a break. It's not like break policy. And then I think that's really cool that you um, have a different interpretation to like the action. Yeah. Okay, thank you. I have a comment and a question. A, a comment uh, on, on the process in the beginning, uh, probably I would love to have uh, maybe a more detailed case I, I didn't quite get everything out of the first case. It was very, very mm -hmm. short, very concise. And mm -hmm. I was still struggling. So what, what's gonna happen then and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. How it is applied uh, to any situation, but a little more extended. I, I would love that at the beginning. That's ah. always the challenge, right? Like, do you, yeah. do you explain the rules a lot yeah. or do you jump in and play? Uh, yeah. Well, actually we, we would love to have two rounds. So that the first round you kind of you yeah. always need the first round to understand how the game is running and the second round is more like now you're like kind of um released from your fear of building stories of like contributing your ideas and then you're um you don't worry much about the rules and what's going to happen next anymore but yeah normally it's um it's too bad when we have like this presentation and everyone is new and it's like still in this um, lockdown remote that only one can talk at the time. Actually, one round was not a problem. I, I was struggling at the beginning to try to fit it. Uh, it so wh where will I apply it? So the, I ah, had to okay. guess, yeah, that, but that was an issue. One round was not a problem at all, I, I guess. Okay. Yeah, because you did very well. <laughs> so maybe um, it's more about having like, showing you how we built the case example. Like showing yes. you more of the steps along the way. Okay, that's really great to know. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, sorry. I have one more question. Mm -hmm. um, how how have you found delivering this in a facilitated face to face room very different to doing it online? What like what were your insights and what have you learnt? It's so oh. much easier face to face. Yeah, because you 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 connect with the person. You see the person how they react to like yeah. the different um, actions. And, and also I think this like that you can talk one at a time in the big group is really, it, it's good that people listen to you, but also um, it's bad because then this exchanging of ideas is missing in the, in the round table. 
um, a lot of exchanging is missing. How long do you run it if you do it face to face? Also around the same time, but I would say people are more engaged. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, so I, um, so as an example, I did a ten-week online course on service design, um, and because of COVID, it was um, it was a fast transition into the online environment. But they made no changes to the course structure. And my feedback back to them, uh, because of my background as an instructional designer, is I said when you're when you're trans transforming something that is delivered face to face into the online in environment, you actually have to increase the time and the duration of some of the mm -hmm. activities mm -hmm. um, because it's just it's the, the fidelity is, is much lower in mm -hmm. terms of the immersion, immersive experience. So my, my um, suggestion we'll probably do is run this as a three hour workshop, not as a two hour workshop online. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I think for us, at, oh, I don't remember, I would say it's around the same time. Yeah, and maybe give someone a, like like a, a mini break in between. Yeah. Yes. Um, I'm so happy. I also have a background in instructional design, which is you know we're awesome. Um, yeah. But yeah, yeah. I think I think doing that in breaks, we've also toyed with the idea of like what happens if we make it even smaller. Like, what if it's just like an injection of like 15 minutes, super quick type of thing. Like exploring like. What happens if we make it a really chunked learning moment versus what happens if it's bigger? Mm -hmm. Agreed. Three hours with a with a proper break would be much more relaxed for this format. Because I know that when I take my when I take a break, that's when my creativity hits. Right. That's when the consolidation happens. Yeah. Um, and, and and so maybe what you could do is maybe do it as as different type of activities. You might do it like a, a fast. Um, you know, like a crazy eight, you know, a fast ideation session. And then you take a, a half an hour break and then you come back and you do like maybe introduce lots of variety for people to be immersed in, in different times, different pressures, different experiences to give people that, that immersive, rich experience. Cool. Thank you. Great job. I love it. Thank you. I have one more question, if I can. Yeah, <laughs> you go first. Uh, thanks, Francisca. Yeah, applying it, I have to run. <laughs> uh, applying it to, uh, to have you ever applied it to a strategy project or something like that? I, I kind of hear it, but maybe you can tell a bit more on that. Well, I think this one is quite strategic, right? I don't, I'm not sure, I'm not, I'm not in the project, but maybe Josie, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you can tell us a little bit or Molly? Yeah, I would say, you know, when somebody comes to us straight and they say, where do we go with this? And we can say, okay, we can provide you the generic future version. Uh -huh. um, but honestly, more often it's people saying, hey, this is our specific area of focus. Uh -huh. um, this is what we want to solve. And so it's a little bit more focused. It's never been on a properly full open-ended strategy project. Yeah, but also um, but one thing you have it to... definitely could be. How, how would you, if, if you had yeah. a chance, how would you, what would you plug in? The real marketing data, you know, the competition, so on and so forth. And have you ever thought? Of course. Of yeah, but more yeah. extreme almost, like, you know, exaggerate everything, make it a little right. bit more like, like you, you did, like more theatrical, more dramatic. Mm -hmm. um, so plugging in lots of just trends trend cards and setting it in whatever time in the future or in the present makes sense uh if it's strategy i would stick with the base characters that we have for our off the shelf one the, the characters that you played with with some modifications that you know make sense to the client's industry mm -hmm. yeah. yeah but also you have to understand that this is not like after playing the game you will not get the feature of the product or like it's not an ideation process is more of, of explorative so at the end you would say okay now you understand the research maybe you can have like an extra activity uh, like um, a pre-id to, to test how people understand the research and how like how it sparked their ideas and this you can do it in a way and I don't know how you would uh, plan your strategy or um, if it's a product strategy for example um, after seeing all of these research do you, how do you see um, the vision of your your project or your product yeah. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. got it many thanks 
many, many thanks. Thank you. I have another question, as you just um, mentioned, um, that it's not an ideation session. Mm -hmm. um, I'm wondering, have you ever tried tried it as kind of a usability or not usability, but a testing of a service or a strategy or something? How, how does that work? How does it go? Actually, we thought about that, but we never really um, get to, um, to the bottom of it or I like have a... Um, a product but yeah we can really see how this could be like you just give a scenario and then you have this product and you think about how people act around it or you know use it um but we don't have like a solid case at the moment mm -hmm. okay yeah. yeah because i thought we're like we're playing through scenarios in the mm -hmm. game and it shows like best case and worst case scenarios mm -hmm. and we can include extreme users, but more mm -hmm. like yeah, average user groups. And so I was yeah, just imagining it um, being a good tool for that as well. Absolutely. Yeah, I think I think it re can really be. It's just that you change the the mission and you change the center of the the thing that you you include this product or include this feature, whatever you want to test in yeah. it. Um, yeah, to build your mission. Oh, well, um, more questions or if not, please visit our website, um, Playbase. You can learn more about it. And um, we wrote some uh, Medium articles. And yes, if you want to be connected, here are our emails. And um, also, we I would add everyone that put their names on the card. Um, we'll see each other on LinkedIn, I suppose. And yeah, if you want to be part of the um, the design game community, which Molly is um, starting, um, please feel free to get in touch. Yes, thank you all so much. Thank you. Yes, thank you for all the feedbacks and the comments and the really great game. I, I'm yeah. really happy to see like <laughs> everything is built like this. Um, yeah, fantastic job. Yeah, thank you guys for introducing the game to us and it's a nice session. Really great. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Have a nice conference day.